All right, we're here with Phil, and we're going to review the deadlift. So the first thing I'm going to ask Phil to do is step up to the bar with his feet underneath his hips, shins up against the bar, and now I'm going to ask him to create tension in his feet and torque by screwing his feet into the ground. All right, next thing he's going to do is raise his hands up, rotate his uh, thumbs in, and screw his shoulders back into the back of his, um, into the shoulder sockets to create tension back here as well. Now, with his feet, uh, with tension, next thing I want to do is tighten the glutes, tighten his abs. This is the same setup that we use to set up for the air squats. I'm going to ask him to draw his rib cage down and tighten everything up in the midline. From there, he's going to send his uh, hamstrings back as he reaches down to the bar, maintaining that spine the whole way. Now, Phil's using a hook grip. Uh, reverse grips or other grips are fine as well. Uh, this is a great way to lift. Now once he's set up, he's going to realize that there's a little bit of tension still not in the bar and we want to get all that out of there. Remember, we're trying to go from 40 to 60, not 0 to 60. So the next thing Phil's going to do is raise his uh, hips up just a little bit to create tension. Now he's going to sit back down, draw up on the bar, and now he's got total tension in his bar and he's ready to go. When Phil moves, the bar moves. So ready to go ahead and Phil? Good. And now to go back down, it's exactly the same. So I'm going to ask Phil just to rotate the bar and do that same setup from the side. All right, very good. So let's talk about two falls that can happen with these uh, deadlifts. One of them is rounding the back. Now there's a couple ways, well, actually we'll keep it this way. One of the ways of rounding the back happens is by setting up from the bottom up position. So Phil goes ahead and squats down and just reaches over and grabs that bar kind of loose. He's got a round in his back. Now even if he takes this roundness out of his back, Afterwards, it brings the shins to the bar. It still doesn't set up his spine the way we want to. So it's a lot more appropriate to stand up and set everything up first and then set it up this way. So this would be wrong even if Phil then brought his shins to the bar and tried to arch his back. So go ahead and show us what that would look like. Well, that's a rounded back pickup. Can you show us if you did it? Go ahead and like, tighten up your, your spine like you're going to pick it up. Right. So he's still got the arch in the back. He's still got wrinkles in the back of his shirt. But we haven't set up the spine appropriately because he can't do it from this position. All right. Another one happens to the one he did where he uh, rounds the back and picks it up. The last one we want to show you is more of a ten what they call tension hunting, what Kelly Starrett calls tension hunting. And basically what that is, is Phil doesn't have all the slack out of the bar before he pulls, and it becomes a problem. So let's see you pull where we hear the, the clink at the bottom of the bar. So he sets up. Everything is pretty much good. We hear the clink at the bottom of the bar. What that's telling us right off the bat as an instructor is that Phil didn't have all the slack out of the bar. And that's going to cause reverberations right through the body. It can definitely cause injuries.